This is Metastrophic Music. Campers, <laughs> you're tuned in to Metastrophic Music, and I'm Giggles the Scary Clown. <laughs> this is the Halloween episode. <laughs> what the hell, Giggles? Get out of here! Get back in the closet, Giggles. Back in the closet. Oh, sorry about that, guys. This is Duffy Kelly. I'm so sorry, man. Giggles just. <laughs> He came out. He knew it was Halloween. He, it was the Halloween episode, and he was trying to take over. It startled me. It giggles out of nowhere. I know. I love it. So here we are. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween, campers. We are here today with a very spooky episode for you. We are covering The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. Simpsons, uh, one of my favorite shows. Pro no, actually, I'm going to proclaim it is my favorite show. I mean, from the time, you know, it came on in 1990 and started airing weekly, it's been my favorite show. I feel really old when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know the fact that we've been watching it since it first came on. That means we're old. <laughs> Gotta be up to like almost 700 episodes or more now, right? Yeah, more, I think. Yeah, Treehouse of Horror, man, like, staple of the show. It's the episode that, as soon as a new season began every year, at least for me, that was the episode, I can't wait for the Treehouse of Horror. Yeah, it has, like, the same impact as most shows, their, like, season premiere or their season finale. Yeah, yeah. And I, I watched... <laughs> I watched all 33 of them that are currently out. A couple of adjacent we'll say treehouse adjacent episodes yeah and there really isn't a bad one no i don't think so yeah some of the episodes they're not all like horror but there's a pretty high kill count <laughs> yeah <laughs> throughout all of the treehouse of horror it's surprising that even going through into the later episodes, man, they still push boundaries. I was not expecting <laughs> how shockingly brutal it can be at times. Yeah. And you know, this show is never really designed for kids. <laughs> no. It's always been an adult cartoon. But it was funny, like, as a kid, you know, I was allowed to watch the show. Yep, same here. It seemed weird to me when I was a kid, and I was like, oh, man, some of my friends are not allowed to watch The Simpsons. Right. Treehouse of Horror explains completely, you know, like, you see one Treehouse of Horror, and then it's like, oh, yeah, no, this, yeah, I don't want my 10-year-old watching this. <laughs> For sure. Uh, let's explain to the campers kind of what we did here. Yeah. We each built a stack before Treehouse slash adjacent episodes. Then we each picked an episode off of each other's stack that we liked. And then we picked one off of our own so that we have four total episodes for you that we were going to be talking about today. And really, we could have picked any of them because they're all so good. We really could have. All eight of the ones we had were enjoyable. From my stack, this isn't necessarily like my favorites or the ones I think are the best. They're just ones sticking out to me right now. The four that I picked were the ones that I enjoyed the most out of the experience and wanted to go back and watch again, I guess is how I viewed it. I think we picked a great selection here. Yeah, definitely. So we'll go through these chronologically. Wait, you said you wanted to share a little Simpsons factoid? Oh yeah, so... You can dig deep into the show itself and discover so many things. It's wild. So much cool information you can find about The Simpsons. And I'm not one of those people who goes digging into all that stuff. But because we had this episode coming up, you know, I did that a little bit. And what I discovered that was completely new to me, and I don't know how, didn't know this prior. So the Simpsons family is actually based on Matt Groening's actual family. Really? Yeah, so Matt Groening's father's name is Homer. His mother's name what? is Marge. His sisters <laughs> are Maggie and Lisa. Isn't that wow. crazy? Yeah, how did, how did I not know that? Yeah, Matt 
is Bart is the way I seen it. He's basically Bart in the family. I oh mean, obviously, God. Dad's not like an idiot. Yeah, I, th- I think that's wild, man. Matt Groening and his wife, their kids are named Homer and Abe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know, which is after his family, but, you know, it just seems funny. Right away, you think he named them after the cartoon characters. Yeah. (laughs) Into the treehouse we go. All right. So we're going to start with Treehouse of Horror. Then it was known as the Simpson Halloween special originally for the first, God, 10 years or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah. For it switched over. Oh, wow. For the sake of consistency here, we'll call them Treehouses of Horror. Yeah. And this one's the fifth one from the sixth season from 1994. And I have a little tidbit. I didn't do a lot of research on these episodes. The one note that I did come across for this episode was, and I'm quoting this from the Wikipedia, so if it's not correct, then blame Wikipedia. Oh, yeah. It says, in response to longstanding complaints about excessive graphic violence in the show, Showrunner David Merkin mandated that this episode contain as many disturbing and gory elements as possible. <laughs> and I, I thought that was awesome. Nice. That is how you respond to critics. That's how they've always responded. They've always been like, F you to the network, yes. to whoever, you know. <laughs> Marge, in this episode, Marge comes out and she gives a warning, like, yeah. don't let your kids watch this episode. It's not a joke. This is the scariest stuff of the year, and it's violent. We're like, yeah! Yeah. <laughs> this one is my favorite episode. Yeah, this is the most memorable one, in my opinion, like, of all time. Oh, for sure. It starts with the shinning. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that is the quintessential Treehouse segment. Yeah, I think it's the most memorable or like out of any Simpsons episode, period. This is the one that I can just recall the entire thing in my mind. And I feel like this is back in school times. This was the one where we just quoted so many lines from this all the time. I love uh, Lisa's quiet in the beginning. What about Grandpa? (laughs) <laughs> and no response. Yeah. No seller. They just left grandpa. Yeah, the family in the beginning, they, they're on their way to their vacation or whatever, and they keep turning back because Homer forgot to lock the door or whatever. Like Marge says, did you do this? Did you do that? And so they turn back a couple times. Then the last time, Lisa says, <laughs> you know, we forgot grandpa. And she's yeah, silent. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I love that line. That's like one of my favorite lines of all time. It just sets the tone so perfectly well. Like, this is going to be a bad trip. So what I did is I was just kind of, I was trying not to just write down every freaking thing that was happening. (laughs) You were creating a a word-by-word script. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Just narrating the entire episode. Some other things that I liked in this episode were uh, Bart, when he cuts the holes through the hedge maze for the shortcut. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, cutting off the cable TV and the beer supply, Mr. Burns. And then instantly, as soon as they leave, Homer goes nuts, you know, like right away. So comparing this to The Shining, you know, I like how they incorporate so much. Do you want to get sued? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, which they say right right in the episode. (laughs) The whole no TV, no beer make Homer go crazy written all over the walls. You know, Marge goes into the typewriter. (laughs) Feeling fine. (laughs) (laughs) I love when he's on the stairs. He's going, give me the bat, Marge. Give me the bat. Give me the bat. Frankie, he's doing all the scary faces and acting weird. And he looks in the mirror and scares himself and falls down the stairs. That's like one of my favorite of any Simpsons ever. Classic. Awesome. Blood coming off the elevator. Yeah. Him chopping his way through the door. Just awesome. So many cool things in this treehouse. And a great finish, too. Like the finding the TV out in the snow. Yeah. That Willie dropped when he was going to save them. Urge to kill is rising once again. <laughs> They're all frozen there. Oh, yeah. You mentioned Willie. I like the running gag with Willie and all three skits on this treehouse. Yeah. He gets the axe. Just keeps getting killed. I love it. Next segment is... 
time and punishment. And this is my favorite period. I love this because other than Back to the Future, mm-hmm. my favorite movie trilogy, I hate time travel. Okay. <laughs> like I hate it, hate it, hate it. So this is the great lampooning of all things time travel, and it's wonderful. There is not a single moment of this episode that I do not thoroughly enjoy. From the moment that the randomness of him having his hand in a toaster laughed so hard every time. (laughs) Dad, it's in the toaster again. (laughs) You know, he's out in the basement an extended amount of time trying to repair a toaster and creates a time machine. (laughs) Homer repairs a toaster. And he keeps going back to just dinosaur time, too. It's not like he's going through time. Yeah, he just keeps stepping on things, squishing things. Yeah. You go squish now. Kills the bug. And then it leads to one of the most memorable universes, the Flanderverse. Oh, yeah. All-powerful ruler of the world. This is before the dystopian stuff was trendy. 1984-ish kind of vibe reprogramming and... Yeah, I like he travels again in time, squishes the fish, and then he comes back and the family is giant. He doesn't spend any time there. Time travels again. He sneezes on the T-Rex, and then he goes back to his own time, and everything is beautiful in every way and perfect. But he asks for a donut, and Marge is, what's a donut? And he just freaks out, you know, and he's me out of here. And as soon as he leaves, then it starts raining, and obviously it's raining donuts. <laughs> he goes back to the dinosaur time. He's just going absolutely berserk, squishing, stomping. And then he comes back, and what he ends up settling for, what he considers good enough, <laughs> you know, everything's the same except for his family all has lizard tongues. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he has silverware, right? Because he doesn't have a lizard tongue. They're using their tongues to eat. He has lived in this universe. It's been accepted that Homer just doesn't have the lizard tongue. Good point, yeah. I appreciate it because it doesn't make sense. And that's the whole point of that episode, I feel like, is that none of this makes sense. They're in that Flanderverse part where Mo comes out and they talk about getting lobotomies. Yeah, he's got his brain in the jar. That is gruesome. I remember that standing out as a kid being like, What's a lobotomy? This is a twisted, twisted stuff, yeah. man. Yeah, teaching us new things about the, the world. <laughs> Going into the final segment, this is one of the more messed up segments in the entire treehouse as well. Yeah. Nightmare cafeteria. Cannibalism is no joke. <laughs> yeah, and targeting specifically the children, too. Yeah, so they eat the students. A lack of budget for school lunch Paired with the detention overcrowding, obviously it makes perfect sense. You have all these kids in detention. We don't have any meat. I got a feeling Ooter is around here somewhere. (laughs) You might even say we ate him and he's in our stomachs right now. (laughs) (laughs) I grow so fond of Skinner through these Treehouse episodes. He has some great one-liner. He's a perfect character for the Treehouse universe. Yeah. Eat a stick of butter. That's your homework. <laughs> <laughs> the kids, Bart and Lisa, are trying to tell their mother that this is going on at the school. And I like, she says, you march right back to school and say, don't eat me. <laughs> <laughs> I love the end of this episode when Bart wakes up from the nightmare, because this is nightmare cafeteria. So he wakes up and it was all just a bad dream. And then he learns of the fog that turns people inside out. Stupid cheap weather stripping. Yeah. (laughs) So that concludes the first one. I think this is the most, it's just the quintessential, I guess you could say, Treehouse of Horror. Yes. I was happy that you picked this. I know that one so well. I've seen it so many times, but... You know, it's because it's just epic. You know, it's so good. We'll jump ahead to another one off of mine from season nine, Treehouse of Horror 8, 1997. This one starts with a great introduction. Oh, I love it. Replacing Marge with the warning, we have the Fox sensor going through the script, crossing everything out. Yes. Because he's here to protect you from reality, people. Right. On his watch, there will be no raunchy sex or violence. (laughs) That's right. Then the little raided thing in the corner starts stabbing (laughs) the fox sensor. I love that. Our three tales in this episode are the Omega Man, Fly vs. Fly, and Easy Bay Coven. So let's start with the Omega Man. 
I love this one. Homer ends up the last man on Earth after eating a whole bunch of food in a nuclear fallout shelter. Yeah, so, <laughs> so what happens exactly? It starts and he's just shopping for bomb shelters? <laughs> yeah, some escalation in a war or whatever. So he's like inside it when the actual... When the French shoot the missile. Yeah. <laughs> so he comes out just having a good time in this <laughs> this new reality of his. Yeah. Yeah, he accepts it. He's like, awesome. I can do everything I want to do. He's He just <laughs> yeah. discovered everyone's dead. And he's like, ha, ha, ha. he's trying to laugh about it. <laughs> so he ends up in a church dancing yeah. naked. And originally, I had read that he was going to be dancing naked on the altar. They said that that was too oh. much, the censor. And I think that might have been one of the things that led to the whole Fox censor thing in the okay. beginning. We haven't mentioned yet two of the most iconic characters in all of Treehouse history. Kang and Kodos? Yeah, dude. Kang calls back to his home planet, and he's telling him about yeah. what's happening here. <laughs> sure, Kang, I'm writing it all down. Yep. Yeah, he's reporting it. Basically, it's like it's a UFO that he's reporting. Yeah. When Homer starts to figure out what's happening, that everybody's dead, he's in traffic. You know, the car in front of him isn't moving. He says, maybe a little friendly punching will move your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and so he gets out of the car and he goes up and it looks to me like Milhouse's dad, right? Yeah. He's dead in the driver's seat and Homer just punches his head in and just turns to like ash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still got it. Yeah, so not everybody died in the bomb blast. The rest turned to mutants, and mutants try to kill him. The end of the episode, the mutants are outside the Simpsons' house. Family's there on the inside, you know, mutants are on the outside. They're like, yeah, we can all work together. We can live in this utopian society and blah, blah, blah. You know, they let their guard down. Marge signals the attack, and they just pull guns, yeah. pull out their guns, and just blast them all. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Then next up, we have Fly vs. Fly. A uh, parody of one of my favorite horror films. I just watched it recently, actually. The Fly, Jeff Goldblum. I know you and I have talked about this movie a little bit. Yeah. Homer buying a matter transporter for what, 35 cents or something like that. 30, yeah, 35, 35 cents at a yard cents. sale from Professor Frank, just selling all of his science stuff. My favorite part... He moves it to the fridge, yeah. right? He's on the couch in the fridge, and then he grabs the cat ear medicine, and you're expecting, like, a spick take or something, and you just hear him in the background. Mmm, oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting and dumb, but also, like, joyous yeah. and fun. He has all the best ideas for what to do with the transporter, too, you know? He sets it up to pee from the living room to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's going to do it right in front of March, too. He sets it up. He probably had to go to the bathroom at that point. So he took all the time to set it up right. with the toilet and come back down. She's sitting right there. Go right in front of her. No problem. And she's like, no, what are you doing? So then Lisa obviously goes in, sees the matter transporter. She said whatever and sits on the toilet to go herself. <laughs> yeah. So he punches her on I the toilet. It. What do you expect, Lisa? Got- You're supposed to be the smart one. So they're down in the living room, Homer and Marge. You hear Lisa through the transporter from upstairs go, Oh, somebody just punched me in the face. (laughs) And Homer goes, That was your mother. (laughs) Yep, the transporter, cat and the dog go through it and they fuse together. So we learn that happens when two different things go in at the same time. Bart wants to go in with the fly. He chooses to go in with the fly because he thinks he's going to become like a right. super fly. He's like, this is going to be awesome. So he goes in. The fly's head is on his body, you know, but he, Bart, is a little fly. It's his head didn't turn out exactly the way he was planning on. <laughs> so the fly head Bart body is chasing around the Bart head fly. Homer says, get him, boy. Smash that fly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, good episode. It was. This last segment, Easy Mm -hmm. Bake Coven, such a brilliant twist on the Salem Witch stuff. I like when they make Marge the leading character. Yeah, me too. Yeah, she's a good villain, you know? For sure. Marge in this one is charged for being a witch, and she is a witch. Her along with her sisters. I wrote down they go out to eat the Flanders kids. (laughs) Glad you brought up Flanders. 
where they're talking about the witch mod was like, they're gonna make us commit wanton acts of carnality. And under his breath, Flanders goes, that'll be the day. What did you say? <laughs> Yeah, I like how they turn it into, this is the story of the first Halloween. Extra level to the whole episode. Really well yeah. written. Another dark finish. Homer egg in his own house and made fun of for it. Turns and points to his daughter and she's a witch. <laughs> yeah. And then they all chase Lisa. <laughs> Seem like it's a light, playful joke. If you take a second to think about some of these things. When you think about, you know, back in the day when witch burning actually happened, I'm sure there was nasty parents or whatever that were like, oh, well, mm -hmm. don't say this or that because you talk back to me, you know, you're a witch. <laughs> All right, now we're going to get into to a couple of your episodes Yeah, here. which one are we on now? We're on season 27? Yes. All right. So season 27, this one is not a treehouse. This is Halloween of Horror. 2015. They still did the treehouse this season, right? Yeah, they had treehouse and they had this one. Yes. The Simpsons, the creators, they understand how popular treehouse of horror is or their Halloween episode is. So I think it's cool that they're just like, we know what works. So we're going to do an extra Halloween episode this season. I love the intro to this how Homer is explaining to Ned Flanders that this isn't the Treehouse of Horror episode. He's like, yeah, that's uh, next week. So he's decorating his house as if you would decorate like for Christmas. He's decorating the house for Halloween, almost like a National Lampoon's sort of thing. Yeah, ever scream terrors. Yeah. So he has like his own theme when he does it every year too. I love it. I'm also realizing, like, as I'm looking at my notes here, that this kind of is a three-tail treehouse type of episode because we have several things happening in this one. You know, I hadn't really thought of that. They kind of all tie together. Yeah, so we have the seasonal, like, you know, Halloween store workers in this one. They sell Homer the decorations on the side. Homer rats on them, and so, of course, the workers get fired and they want revenge. Oh, and I love that he calls the workers scuzzos in this. <laughs> <laughs> we also have Krusty Land Halloween nights happening in this episode. So this is where Lisa is traumatized. Like, she's got PTSD from this Halloween event. So scared that they have to, like, shut down the entire part. <laughs> First, he's trying to, like, talk her into it yeah. to stay there. Immediately, she wants to leave. The tickets are super expensive. <laughs> I'll take you home right now, but I spent a lot of money on this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They had the crybaby yeah, cry button. alarm. <laughs> they, they. Stop the horror. <laughs> <laughs> the Simpsons, they end up having to take down their decorations. Bart's pissed. He's like, you turned us into skippers. Seasonal workers show up. Oh, I love Homer says, hey, you're those pop-up scuzzos. What do you scuzzos want? <laughs> and then he's whistling the, the Halloween theme song. And then she song. is, too. <laughs> Marge takes Bart out to go trick-or-treating because she wants to make Halloween great for him to, like, the premier trick-or-treating area. Oh, there's an E.T. there that'll say your name, you know? And Bart's like, so it'll say any name, you know, anything I say, it'll repeat it. And I love that some kid gives him this, so he repeats back, Hello, scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't get a let in. Disappointment on Bart's face. This is one of the few episodes where Bart isn't just the troublemaker child. Yeah, he's like a real kid. This episode is so well written. Little uh, side thing here. When you were a kid, were there like certain streets that you would go to because it the best candy or the best experience? Oh, yeah. So I moved around a lot as a kid. And do you remember, and this may even still exist, I'm not sure, Bailing's Orchard? Yeah. Now they used to have a haunted hayride and a haunted house there. I specifically remember the chicken exit in oh. the haunted house. <laughs> I remember a bunch of years I'd go out the chicken exit until you finally get to that point. I'm going to go through the whole way. Yeah, and you feel proud of yourself getting through it at the end. This episode brought back a lot of memories like that. 
so the seasonal workers they showed up to the simpsons house and they get inside i like when homer is like looking for his phone he's like they took my cell phone picks up the house phone he's it's dead and he's like and they forgot to pay my phone bill <laughs> <laughs> Too late for trick or treating, you know. It, it's adult time. The uh, the grown up Halloween song. Tonight we're going way way too hard. <laughs> I think it's funny that they showed both the family experience and the adult experience in this episode. You know. Yeah. Good episode. Oh, and at, at the end of this one, Kang and Kodos. It was Lenny and Carl dressed up as Kang and Kodos. What are you doing, fruit balls over there? <laughs> <laughs> It's all just talk about candy. Yeah, it wouldn't be the Halloween episode if you didn't open some fruise balls. All right, we got our, our final treehouse. Season 34. Treehouse of Horror 33 from 2022. This was last year's episode. Our three tales, we have the Puka Duke, Death Tome, and Simpsons World. The Puka Duke, man. I think this was... Probably, I guess you could say the scariest or the most horror tale. They really leaned into trying to make this one scary. Absolutely. If I had to come across one that was more sinister, I would say I probably would have included it for that because I enjoy it. Yeah, like if you watch this alone by yourself at night yeah, in the dark, yeah, you could get creeped out by this, you know? <laughs> yeah. It has great touching moments between Marge and Maggie. Again, Marge. The villain, yeah. Yeah, I love that. So Marge reads a book to Maggie called The Puka Duke. It's, uh, you know, about this evil, I guess you could say. And by reading the book, she let this evil in. Possesses Marge. Marge tries to basically kill Maggie because she's possessed by this evil. It's pretty dark and twisted. She's literally trying to like murder Maggie, who's an infant, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Her voice, man. When she's like hanging yeah. from that door and she's like, let me in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's unexpected in that moment. I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, what the? Yeah. Bart and Homer come oh, running yeah. in from outside and. and <laughs> We're building a dojo. <laughs> and then just the ending of the episode, Homer, Bart, and Lisa go off to the aquarium. Well, they come home after this is after the whole exorcism of the Puka Duke. And you could hear off camera Homer coming in and you hear a call from upstairs. Marge, kids got sick in the touch pool. Left to throw up clothes on your purse. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about that. I yeah. died laughing. Like, I had to pause the episode, and I was laughing so hard when I heard that. That is one of the cruelest, funniest things I've ever heard in my entire life. It's like what you would expect to hear from, like, a five-year-old or a six-year-old, you know? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> this one is right up there in my favorites category. Yeah. All right, so then the next one is Death Tome. Right away, like sometimes, you know, when they change the animation, you know, sometimes it's just like couch gag intros and stuff. Explore different styles artistically. And this Death Tome was done in what I would call like an anime style. Is that kind of right? Yes, it is. It's based on an anime called Death Note. Oh, okay. I'm a anime fan, and I've watched that series, and I thought it was a really great spoof to... I wasn't sure at first how the animation would yeah. fit with their voices because it was slightly jarring in the beginning, but not in a bad way. The voices fit well with the artwork to me, but Amber watched this one with me and she thought that it was a little weird. It was kind of hard for her to match the voice up with the way they looked and everything. But I thought it worked well. The Death Tome is a book in which any name written in the book, that person will die. But one caveat to that is that it has to be unique. Every person needs a unique death in the book. As it goes along and she's writing all these names in there. So something comes out of the toilet, remember? <laughs> an animal comes out of the toilet. That death happens again. An animal comes out of the toilet, but it's a different animal. <laughs> toilet lion, dude. 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, Lisa's a good girl. She's writing all these names in there to save the environment. <laughs> yep. But yeah, then at the end, Lisa is going to write Bart's name in the book to protect herself. Instead, last moment, she puts the name of the... Uh, Shingami. Shingami. Steve Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she puts his name in there and kills him instead of killing Bart. Because she did that, she ends up having to replace the evil spirit. It's a good ending. I like that. Yeah. And I like that they had Mo as the Shingami. All right. Next one, Simpsons World. Yeah, our last one here. Yeah, so this is the Simpsons theme part. Are you familiar with Westworld? No. It's based on that. As somebody who loved that as well, thought this was a really great take on it. My two favorite things were in this episode, Mr. Plow and Canyon Arrow. And this one, for those like myself not familiar with Westworld, the Simpsons are AI robots, and they become aware of themselves. They they have control of the awareness dial, you know. <laughs> he goes, like, fully aware and then has to dial it back. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa's on the floor, like, in fetal position. Yeah, I like all of the uh, callback. One that I really liked was when Homer puts the two guys in the hedge. <laughs> that episode where he comes walking out of the hedge. He puts them in there and they just turn to blood. <laughs> and once again, Kang and Kodos at the end of the episode. Perfect. All right, so the thing I would say to the campers is, if you're fans of The Simpsons... You know, go ahead, explore, watch. They're all good. If you don't, you know, watch the episodes that we talked about in this episode, go through and pick some out and watch them. If you're somebody who maybe is not a big Simpsons fan, I think that the Treehouse episodes are something, you know, they're freaking funny. They're well written. It's good stuff. Yeah. And in true Simpsons fashion, it won't be released after Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's fine, too. You know? Those of you who enjoy a little after Halloween spookiness. Hey, you want to do songs of the week? Yeah, you know what? We're going to throw some songs of the week at the campfire right now for you. Yeah, let's throw a little music in there. You want me to go first? Sure. Okay, so the band that I have this week is Memphis May Fire, and their song is Make Believe. So this is from their newest record, released this year. The record is called Remade in Misery. Memphis Mayfire is an American metalcore band formed in Denton, Texas. Ooh. Are you familiar with Denton? Yes, I am. Not too far uh, from where I live. Oh, nice. Yeah, they formed there in 2006. They have six studio albums and two EPs currently. So this song that I chose, okay, so this is a metalcore band, but I guess, I mean, not to say that all metalcore is just heavy all the time. You know, this guy is really good singing voice, and they do some tracks that are a little more toward the ballad style for like a metal band. So it's a little bit slower. It's more like a groove-oriented type of tune. Got a great melody. It's a type of chorus that gets stuck in my head, and so that's why I chose this. So usually what I do for my song of the week is I'll scroll through my, you know, recently liked songs from like the last couple weeks. A lot of the time I like to try to pick something that's new to me, keeps it yes. interesting for me. Once in a while I'll choose an old classic if it pops back up. This was one that was floating around in my newly liked songs. I've been listening to just a lot of like real heavy stuff. And so I like that this kind of stood out. It was more like a groove and a little more toward that heavy ballad. From the chorus, the lyrics, is this all a dream? Tell me, is it make believe? Tell me, tell me, sir. <laughs> That's all I got, man. Yeah. You played it for me before the campfire, and I like that breakdown too, that heavy breakdown. It does do a nice metalcore breakdown. Yeah, I dig it. All right. Give me yours. So my song of the week is Sleepless Machine by Audiovent after a 21-year hiatus. Oh, wow, man. Released a single. And I feel like our special campfire positively cosmic vibes. And we were talking about how the lone album that they'd put out was great. Yeah. Let's check my new music. I see Audiovent. And my first thought, this is a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> because 
on this certain streaming service, there has been more than one occasion where somebody's not doing the due diligence. Some random person is assigning a song to a band, and it's not that. Yeah. So my first thought was, this is wrong. Audio event doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Wait a minute. What? Okay, this is an actual song. So then I have to, like, take a second. I was like, no pressure here, guys. I've already built this up in my head in the few seconds since you've released this. I press play, and I'm like, yes. Yeah. This feels like a genuine evolution of a band that had been yes. making music for the last 21 years, you know? Yeah. It's great. Yeah, you played it for me, and that's exactly what I thought. It sounds so natural. It doesn't sound like the old stuff that we know, but it sounds a natural evolution, yeah. and it sounds fresh, and it sounds like it has its own sound. I'm hoping, with just the single, that there's going to be an album, and I cannot wait. I am here to champion this band. You know, it's got that alternative, but like at the same time, it has its own flavor. And I don't know, it's picking up some cool sci-fi vibes to it. And I'm just really into that. Yeah. Lyrics. Ends before the means. No hand at my controls. I'll just go through the motions. It's all mechanical. I relate to that. Even like the title, Sleepless Machine. Positively Cosmic. It's like you had to pick this one because, or, you know, turned yourself back onto this band again over the summer, like shared that with me. Yep. You know, we both were like reacquainted with the band that we hadn't listened to in so many years. That's a catastrophic experience, man. So I think that wraps up this spooky episode. Yeah, where's Giggles? <laughs> Bring him back out. Come on, Matt Giggles. Giggles is dead. In the tradition, it's a dark finish here at Metastrophic Music. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm right here. <laughs> Get back in the fire. We're roasting some clown tonight. Oh, uh, check back with us again. We're, we're going to do some more stuff like this. Keep riding that rainbow. I'm Duffy. I'm Kelly. Ciao. Thank you.